story time about my horrible toxic ex. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. My ex and I had been friends for three months. When he asked me out, I said yes because I really liked him. But the relationship only lasted one month. He started showing red flags really quick. He would constantly try to monopolize my time. If I told him that I couldn't hang out, he would show up to my house randomly without even asking if he could come over. It's like he was checking to see if I was telling the truth or not. Anytime I would be babysitting, he would also show up and ask to hang out. Obviously, I would say no because I was working. He also monitored all of my social media. If I posted anything about BLM, he would get so angry and he wouldn't talk to me. One day, I get a text from him saying, I don't think this is going to work out anymore. He actually broke up with me over text. I was on a road trip with my family at the time, so I was so distracted and I I thought I'd be okay. A few days later, I find out he started dating my best friend. Then he started sending me abusive text messages story time about how i found out my sugar daddy was stalking me disclaimer this is not my story time it was sent to me on instagram i signed up to a sugar daddy website last year i lost my job because of covid just started my own small business and things were not going well i also helped my parents out with money because i didn't want them to be working during covid i signed up to a website and instantly i started getting messages one man stood out because he was very active and owned several businesses I told him i didn't want to meet up because i just wasn't going to do that but also because of covid he agreed to have a phone conversation with me and then eventually he offered me five thousand dollars a month this was more than enough to help me and my parents out. After that, I was basically his online companion. He would text me and I would text back. We went out to dinner a few times, but because of COVID, we kept our distance. It was truly the perfect scenario for me. Then I noticed that he started to get really clingy. If I didn't text him back right away, he would get upset. One day, I got another message from the Sugar Daddy website. Another man was asking me to go out to dinner twice a week, and he wanted to pay me $1,000 for this. So I said, of course. When I told Sugar Daddy number one that I'd be busy two days out of the week, he got really mad and asked me where I lived. I told him I couldn't tell him, Sugar Daddy starts banging on my front door. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. And he didn't know where I lived. I look through the peephole and I tell him to leave. That's when he shows me a wad of cash. He tells me I can keep it with no strings attached. I said no, and that's when he started calling me names. He started yelling really loud. I was hoping my neighbors would hear and call the cops. In order to calm him down, I opened the door and I let him in. Big mistake. He asked to use my bathroom and that's when I grab his phone. I saw on his camera roll that he had pictures and video of me. he had been following me around for months. I started calling the cops, but that's when he came out of the bathroom. I asked if he could stay over and I said yes. I was so scared. We're supposed to have dinner tonight. The cops said they can't help because he hasn't heard. Story time about when a client came to get her nails done by me just because she thought I was messing with her boyfriend. So right off the jump, when this girl was booking her appointment, it was already like iffy. Like she was going back and forth. Like booking an appointment with me is simple. Inbox me about time, send your deposit. If any of those times you know go with your schedule and that's it your appointment is booked but she kept going back and forth asking me a million and one questions and right when i was gonna be like you know what that spot's gone even though it wasn't gone she ended up sending her deposit and booked her appointment so anyways the day of her appointment comes um she's like 20 minutes late and i usually give a 15 minute grace period but she was my last person so i was like whatever i'll still take you so at her appointment she's like asking me all these personal questions that you don't ask anybody like she even asked me if i was like still messing with my baby so anyways as she was sitting in the chair getting her nails done we were going back and forth conversating i have a habit of asking first time clients how did they find me how did they find out about me she said that um, she was looking at so-and-so's status, which hint is her boyfriend, but she didn't say that at the time. But anyway, she was looking at his status and she seen that I liked one of his statuses. She clicked on my page and boom, she seen that I was an LTEC. Um, okay. Weird. But I didn't say anything. I was like, oh, okay. So as the conversation gets deeper, she starts asking me questions about that person which, you know, later on I found out is her boyfriend. So she's asking me questions like, so do you know so-and-so? Like, and I'm like, I know of him, but I don't really like look into his life. Like I don't pay attention to him. And she was like, oh, well, why did you like his status or whatever? And I'm like, what? <laughs> Oh my gosh, you guys, let me tell you the story about how I feel like my boss tried to set me up. So when I was in high school, I used to work for this catering company, but we would also host like really big parties, like Super Bowl parties and stuff, Sweet Sixteens, whatever. So one day I come in, it's like six of us there. Me and my best friend came together and everybody's moving so weird. Like the older people, the people that have been there longer than us were moving so weird. And then one of my coworkers comes out and was like, I don't know why he scheduled you today. I'm like, what? Like, what are you talking about? Like, what? what's the tea? You know what these bitches said to me? They were like, these people are racist as fuck. So you're telling me I'm about to be a hostess at a Super Bowl party with 
400 drunk ass racists that's what you're telling me mind you i'm the only black girl that works here the only black person at all he could have had anybody else work this day but for some reason he chose my black ass to work this party when i tell you the sweats the shivers the shits part two so i start asking him i'm like how do you know they're racist and they literally told me like last year when somebody didn't catch a ball oh they were throwing n-words out and bombs hard er like full-blown kkk racist okay so for the next six to eight hours it's only one of me and like 400 white people who apparently are racist i text one of my other friends i start telling her the situation because i'm like bitch i'll be damned i'll be damned i need somebody to know the situation that i'm in right now just in case something happens they start coming in it's like bikers tattoos it's big fake boobs big bleach blonde hair you know at this point i'm already thinking about quitting because i know that my boss does not have my well-being in mind everything went like it was supposed to go though honestly nothing happened to me everybody was like relatively nice but i just feel like my boss needed his ass whipped for setting me up like that why would you hire your one black worker for the night of a racist party story time on how my high school bully became my stepdaughter a little backstory let's call my bully stephanie well stephanie loved to bully me in high school there wasn't a reason other than she just did not like me and i was very very innocent so i let her bully me she even made up a rumor that i had an std that's how bad it was well after high school i decided to go to college for a year but then i dropped out i started working at a law firm where i met my soon-to-be husband and of course I didn't know it was her dad. I was working at the law firm only part-time, so I didn't spend much time with him, but we did fall in love really, really quick. We went out on dates first, and he did tell me he had a daughter, but he never showed me a picture of his daughter because he said he didn't have a good relationship with her. Well, for his birthday, we went out to dinner, and he did tell me that his daughter was going to be there. So I wanted to make story time about how I caught my dad doing the dirty with my best friend. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. My mom and dad have been married for 30 years. My dad started modeling when he was really young and he still does it to this day. Every single time that I would bring a friend over to my house, they would always talk about how cute my dad is. It never annoyed me at all because I was so proud of my dad, but it really bothered my mom. So out of respect for my mom, I would just tell my friends not to say anything. My mom is definitely the jealous type. My best friend and I have known each other for about three years. She was the new girl at school and we became friends and ever since then we've been inseparable. She always comes over to my house, we have sleepovers, and my family really likes her. My mom even takes her shopping with us and buys her tons of stuff. She always comes with us to get manicures and pedicures and facials as well. A few years ago, my mom told me that my dad was unfaithful to her and it really upset me. Basically, my mom couldn't trust him at all. And ever since then, I've kept an eye on him as well. One day, I came home early from work. I see my best friend sitting on the couch with my dad. She was kissing his neck. When they saw me, they got I see my best friend kissing my dad on the neck and when they both saw me they jumped off the couch right away disclaimer this is not my story time it was sent to me on instagram my best friend said oh you're finally home and my dad literally just walked toward the kitchen like nothing had happened my best friend walks toward me to give me a hug but i stop her straight in her tracks i asked her why she was kissing my dad's neck she laughs and said of course i wasn't and then i said i just saw it and she said that she was just thanking him for all the stuff my mom and dad do for her right i was not buying it my dad didn't even look me in the eyes after that i decided not to question her any further but i was really angry with my best friend. After that, I was totally convinced that there was something going on between them. So I decided to set a trap. I told my mom and dad I would be at work all day and that I would be home really late. And I told my best friend the same thing and that I wouldn't be able to hang out with her. I knew that my mom would be at work all day, which meant that my dad had the house all to himself. I said bye to my dad, but I sneaked back into the house and hid in my room all day. Then I started hearing voices. It sounded just like my best friend. I opened my dad's bedroom door and there they are on the bed doing the dirty. Disgusting. I'm back with another story time. I'm so overwhelmed with all the stories in my email. I will do as many as possible. Today, we're going to get into Vanessa's story. Now, this is some work tea. Honestly, Vanessa, you were just living out my dream. I always wanted to be a nanny for a rich family. Because I feel like their tea is just different. Like, it's just, it's real spicy. This story took place in 2019. I had just graduated from college and I was looking for more full-time work. Throughout high school, I had always babysat. One of the family's moms told me I should join this nanny and website. Site. It's not like care.com. It's an elite nannying site. You basically have to be really educated and have years of experience. So after three months of looking, I got matched up with the family and I had to go through this super rigorous process to get hired. So once I met with the family, they felt like I was a good match and I had only met the mom so far, but I knew they were very wealthy. I don't know anything about sports. So I went home and I did my Googles and turns out 
Her husband played for the Golden State Warriors. Come back for part two. Part two. I was a little bit starstruck because I had never really been around this much money in such a big house. Starting out on day one, the wife was just so nice and the kids were really good. Didn't really have to do much around the house because they also had other house workers. So all I really did was look after the kids, pick them up from school, stuff like that. My husband wasn't around a lot because of his career, but when he was there, the wife was just so protective. Like if there was any moment where him and I could possibly be alone in the house, she was running right to the room. And I could just tell that something happened, possibly with the last nanny. So one day I showed up early. She had always told me that if I had extra time, I could show up 30 minutes early, stay 30 minutes late just in case anything extra needed to be done. So this day I showed up early, just like I had done before. But unknowingly, her husband was the only one there. Come back for the final part. Part three, final part of Vanessa's story. I came into work just like any other day, not expecting things to go left. Turns out the wife decided to take the kids to school on her own so I didn't have to do it. When I walked in, nobody else was home besides her husband. So when she came in after me, she was so upset. As I mentioned, she was always super paranoid about us possibly being alone, despite the fact that nothing had ever happened between us. I had never seen this woman so angry. I was in the kitchen cleaning up because she had fed the kids breakfast before she left. Turns out she had actually texted me and told me that she was gonna take them to school. I never got the message because she didn't send it. She accused me of knowing that her husband would be here alone and trying to get to him. She cussed and we argued and fought until I showed her my phone that I had never received the message and she checked her phone and realized that she never sent it. She would not stop apologizing to me. And the whole time I'm just standing there like, I'm a lesbian. And that's the story on how my boss that I was trying to get with her rich NBA player husband. My high school bully became my stepdaughter. Well, we arrived at the restaurant and she still wasn't there. We knew that she was going to come in a little later. Well, about 30 minutes later, I see Stephanie walking towards me. And I was so confused. I thought she was going to come and say hi to me. And when she saw me next to her father, shit went down. We were at a very fancy restaurant. Well, she asked her father, let's call him Ben, what is she doing here? And he told her to not disrespect me like that because I was his fiance. Mind you, I was laughing because this shit was hilarious. Well, before she stormed out of the restaurant, she told her dad to never talk to her again and said that she would never forgive him. Well, long story short, he did ask me why she said that because he was a little curious of why I was laughing. I explained to him that she was my bully in high school and that she terrorized me for four years. And our wedding is in July. This is why you should never talk to strangers in an elevator. One day, a surgeon was working the night shift at a hospital. He just finished his operation on a patient and was going to the basement. He entered the elevator and there was one other woman already inside. They were casually chatting when the elevator door opened and another woman was about to enter. But the surgeon looked horrified. He quickly slammed the close button and punched the highest floor of the building. Surprised, the woman asked why he was being so rude and wouldn't let the other woman in the elevator with them. The surgeon explained that in this hospital, hospital, all patients wear white wristbands with their names printed on them, but the red wristbands are placed on all of the corpses. The surgeon then looks to the woman in the elevator with him and says, that was the same woman I just operated on. She died on the operating table. Didn't you see the red wristband she was wearing? The woman in the elevator with him. Hope you guys liked this video and found it helpful. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. It does help support us, and let's know what videos you guys want to see.